Hello? Hello. I'm back today with a drugstore haul and I'm very excited for it because not only have I not done a haul in a hot minute, this is also a cruelty-free drugstore haul, which I've never done on my channel. Aside from the things that I've been purchasing for my professional makeup kit that I use on clients, I haven't really been buying any makeup for myself, let alone at the drugstore. Overall, I'd say I am definitely making an effort to shop cruelty-free and to use cruelty-free products, at least on myself. When it comes to my professional makeup, kit unfortunately there are products that are industry standard that aren't cruelty free and products that clients expect you to have in your makeup kit or products that they love and that they always request when they're in the makeup chair so I'm trying Today, I've got a little bit of everything to share with you. I've got some foundations, concealers, powders, bronzers, highlighters, eye products, lip products. I'm very excited. The video that I'll be posting after this one will be a makeup tutorial using a lot of the products that I'm talking about today. And I'll probably do a follow-up tutorial using the remainder because I want you to see them in action. And I have had these products for about two or three weeks now. So I've been using them every single day so that I can give you a little summary of how they've been performing for me. Although I love watching hauls where people just fly right through every single product, I do think it's beneficial to give you some information so you can decide whether or not you want to purchase it. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to start out with some foundations and the first one I have is the e.l.f. Oil-Free SPF 15 Flawless Finish Foundation. This is in the shade Sand. Lightweight and oil-free formula is designed to help even your skin tone for a long-lasting, beautiful, semi-matte finish. I would agree this is definitely not a completely matte finish. I don't even think it's a semi-matte finish. I think it's kind of dewy. It's a very hydrating finish. So this comes in a frosted bottle. It has a pump, very nice packaging and componentry for e.l.f. I was thoroughly impressed. I have worn it to work. I would say it has light to medium coverage. It's very natural. I prefer to apply it with a foundation brush like this over a sponge. I find that the sponge absorbs the product way too much, even if it's damp. I definitely will have to continue wearing it to get my full thoughts on it and try to photograph with flash and see if it has any flashback, but so far so good. Next, we've got the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation, and this is in the shade natural. This says, with just a few drops, our total control drop foundation delivers sheer to full coverage and a velvety matte finish. Simply adjust the number of drops you use until the desired level of coverage is achieved. More drops equals more coverage. So it comes in a frosted bottle. It's got the little dropper like this. First, I thought it was going to be really watery and runny, and because of that, it wouldn't give me like full coverage, but it is very buildable. I wouldn't necessarily say that you can get all the way up to full coverage. I usually go for a medium coverage because I still like my skin to sort of peek through a little bit, and it doesn't show too much of my skin texture, which I've got a lot of, so I would recommend this. Okay, I feel I feel like I'm spending way too much time per product and I'm talking too much, so I'm gonna try to get through these next three concealers real quick. I don't want my battery to die like it always does. So first we've got the Wet n Wild Instant Flawless Complexion Concealer in the shade I Bori into you. I see what you did there, Wet n Wild. It highlights features, conceals imperfections, and lifts dark areas. I tried to salvage the outside of it and leave it in its packaging so you can see it, so you can identify it when you go to the store. It comes in like a little pen form like this with a clickable bottom, little brush tip. I would say this concealer is a light to semi-medium coverage. I wouldn't even say coverage. It does a really good job of highlighting and illuminating the under eye area with a little bit of concealing action. I have worn it on its own and I have worn it layered over top of like a more heavy duty concealer. I don't know if I would use it when I'm trying to like glam and trying to get that full coverage look, but for every day or if you like to wear light makeup to the gym, I would highly recommend it. Or if you're just a more natural person, especially when you go to work. I decided to pick up the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer, and this is in the shade Light Ivory. It says, goodbye photo flashback, help eliminate white particle reflection. Tested under seven conditions with top smartphone models with and without flash. This is what it looks like. I would say this shade is a little bit deep for my under eye area. I purchased it online 
online because I couldn't find this in Canada and I didn't really know what I was looking for online. I have used it um, to cover up blemishes on my face and it wore really well. I would say it's a medium to high coverage concealer. I probably will try to get the lightest shade for underneath my eye if it's not like too pink, but this so far um, has been great. I picked up the Essence Camouflage Full Coverage Concealer. This is in the shade Ivory. It says, it's a long lasting camouflage full coverage cream concealer. It reliably covers dark circles and skin imperfections without masking effect for a fresh look. Just dot and blend. I've used it underneath my eyes and I've also used it to clean up um, underneath my brow. It's like a light, to medium coverage. One bad thing I'd have to say about this is that I've only seen two shades in stores. Two shades is unacceptable, but I'm pretty sure Essence is like notorious for that when it comes to their more skin focused range of products. So Essence, you gotta work on that bro. Moving right along to a face powder. I got the Sonia Kashuk Undetectable Loose Powder and this is in the shade Light. I've always really loved Sonia Kashuk products. You can't find them in Canada anymore because we no longer have Target. It makes me happy that she's cruelty free this powder I had very high hopes for because I absolutely love the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder That sort of yellow hue that it has to it, but not too yellow just sort of like a light creamy yellow I'm all about if you don't have it in your kit people kind of look at you sideways So I was really hoping to find something that's comparable and also cruelty free I wouldn't necessarily say that this is it in the slightest Although the shade of it is pretty close and I was very impressed with how finely milled it is and how it sets my under eye There's something about it. That's a little bit reflective and the flashback is out of this fucking world terrible. You know when you're powdering your under eye and you leave it to bake and you end up just doing the rest of your face until the baking is done and then you sweep it away and you don't have that baking underneath your eyes anymore? Well with this, even if you sweep it all away, when you take a photograph with flash, it looks like you still have baking underneath your eyes. And I don't know if it's me or if it's the powder or if I just didn't sweep it off properly and I needed to be more thorough with removing it from underneath my eyes, but the flashback is ridiculous and I wouldn't recommend this if you're gonna be in flash photography. If you're not gonna be in flash photography and you don't give a fuck, I would highly recommend it. It is very nice. I am gonna finish the whole thing, but I don't know that it will replace my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I'm still on the hunt, so if you guys have any cruelty-free recommendations in terms of the shade, the application, and the wear, please leave it in the comments below. I highly appreciate it. I've got a couple bronzers here, and they have been all-stars on my everyday makeup roster. They serve different purposes, and together they are just like magic. I have them both on my face right now. First is the Annabelle Perfect Bronzer in the shade Sunkissed, and this says that it is a superior Superior Mineral and Silk Powder Blend. Annabelle is a Canadian brand. They are cruelty free from my knowledge. I'm not 100% sure if you can find them anywhere in the States, but you could try like Amazon or drugstore.com or you could just come on over to Canada and get it. It's matte, but it does have like a tiny bit of sheen, which I really like, especially on my forehead and my nose. I don't know why. I just really like the way that it looks. It doesn't go on orange. It actually goes on quite natural and I really like pairing it with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. The Butter Bronzer is a little bit more cool toned and it's a little bit more matte than the Annabelle Bronzer. It is quite natural, but it packs a punch in how it applies and how it smells. If you're not into super tropical smelling things, this is not gonna be for you because it is very heavily fragranced. It smells like Hawaiian tropics body oil meets pina colada meets terrible decision making on the Cabo Strip. Kevin Hart got caught up again. Mm -mm. Isn't his wife pregnant right now? What the hell was I saying before I got distracted on Instagram? Great bronzer, uh, you can apply it naturally, you can build it up to a more intense bronze, and I often use it to contour my cheekbones and around my temples. Aside from the fragrance, I don't have anything too bad to say about it. It is a little bit pricey, I think it's like 20 bucks, which is very steep for the drugstore. Most physicians formula products, especially the skin focused ones, are a little bit higher. Oh, I forgot to mention that it comes with a mirror, and it also comes with this like weird ass little foamy applicator. I haven't figured out what the purpose of this is. I probably should have googled it before this video. I don't know, maybe to carve out the cheekbones or something? Who knows? I picked up three of the Wet n Wild Mega Glow highlighting powders that everybody's been raving about. Canada gets 
pretty shafted when it comes to most new makeup releases, especially in the drugstore. But I think these ones are web exclusive anyway, so you can only get them if you purchase them online. I picked up the shades Precious Petal, Golden Crown, and Blossom Glow. I was able to find Precious Petals at Walgreens in the States. I have two Precious Petals because I had ordered all three of these online and I was impatient, couldn't wait for them to arrive. So when I was in the States and I went to Walgreens and I saw this, I had to have it, I had to try it immediately, and I was pleasantly surprised. Precious Petals is more of a peachy glow. Golden Crown is more of a golden glow and blossom glow I'd say is more of like a light iridescent pink glow I've got it on my nose and my cheekbones right now and I really like how it looks I would say blossom glow is great for fair skin golden flower crown would be perfect for deeper skin tones and precious petals would be great for medium skin tones although I do feel like you could probably get away with using all three if you use a light hand they are quite buildable you can use them wet if you want that wet highlight look. I never go for that look. I like a more subtle natural highlight. I think there's like two or three other shades in this formula, but I didn't pick them up. They weren't really my jam. I'm very happy that I ordered these. I absolutely live by my Physician's Formula 2-in-1 Eye Booster Pen. I've probably used this in 80% of my makeup tutorials where I'm doing a winged eyeliner. It's just foolproof, it's what I'm comfortable with, I love it. But I thought I could try something new, so I picked up the Wet n Wild Get the Skinny Laser Precision Mega Slim Eyeliner Pen. Micro thin tip, there's a lot of verbiage on this eyeliner, but it's in the shade black. Get more precision than ever with this ultra fine felt tip eyeliner. Go from subtle to outrageous with this easy to control brush, perfect for tight lining, cat eye looks, and intricate designs. Yes, I kept the packaging just for this video. I actually exacto knifed the back of this thing so I could get it back in. I may not upload often, but when I do, I go all in. It's this adorable ass little eyeliner. The tip is so tiny. I haven't attempted to do a cat eye with it yet. I have used it to line the inner corners of my eyes when I've worn um, false eyelashes with a really thick band. But other than that, I can't really give you any feedback. I'll have more information on it when I use it in a tutorial. I also picked up a white liquid eyeliner by NYX. Haven't used it yet. The applicator looks like this and I look forward to doing some graphic eyeliner looks with it. These two shadows I'm so excited about. They're by Annabelle, and they are intense chrome finish, creamy single eyeshadows. We've got the shade Gold and the shade Mercury. These are very reminiscent of Stila's Magnificent Metal Eyes. The only difference is these don't require a liquid mixing medium to activate them to make them look foiled like the Stila one. You just apply them as they are. I like to use either my fingers or a synthetic brush. I've actually got Mercury on the middle part of my eye right now and you'll see gold in action in my upcoming drugstore makeup tutorial. These are absolutely stunning. I want to get every single shade. I'm so impressed. The price is just unreal. They are sort of like a foiled metallic finish. They're just, I can't say enough good things about them because they're out of this world. And while I'm talking about these, look at the state that my Stila Magnificent Metals in metallic lavender is in. Look at this shit, it dried out, it's like rotten, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I haven't had it for that long. That's like what, 28 to 30 dollars down the drain? I would highly recommend, if you can get your hands on them, do. I'm probably gonna get every shade. I decided to try out the Essence Volume Stylist 18 Hour Lash Extension Mascara with Lengthening Fibers. It says, mascara for perfectly styled lashes with lengthening fibers for fuller and longer lashes up to 18 hour hold with a fiber releasing extension brush. So this is what the wand looks like. You can see the fibers right on it. For a while I got lash extensions and once I gave up on them and stopped getting them, I feel like my lashes have been really jacked up and I've been trying my best to regrow them to the length that they were before I started fucking them up with lash extensions. I have a little serum that I made that I'll share in an upcoming video that I'm gonna start using and sort of like track how the regrowth is going because it's been about a year now since I've had lash extensions 
extensions and I still have certain lashes that just refuse to grow back. So I don't know if I'm the right candidate to review a mascara. What I can say is that it definitely does give me volume. With this one in particular, I don't know if it's the lengthening fibers in it. It does tend to crumble a little bit throughout the day. And when I'm removing it, I have to really rub my lashes together to loosen the product that's on them. Let me know in the comments if you guys would even be interested in seeing my little lash serum concoction it's with all natural products and it's pretty easy to make at home. So kind of a shitty review for this one. Okay, last but certainly not least, I've got a few lip products. This is my favorite category and then we'll be done. I feel like I've been sitting here for hours. Today I am wearing the Wet n Wild Velvet Matte Lip Color and this is in the shade Toffee Frappe. It's retractable, which I really appreciate. And the shade itself is absolutely beautiful. It's like a matte pinky brown. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see an iridescent pink undertone to it. And as it wears off of your lips, you're left with that pinky iridescence. It's very beautiful. It's very comfortable. I've worn it all day long at work. I've worn it through eating. You do have to reapply a little bit when you're eating or drinking, but I don't even mind because I love it so much and I think it's very flattering. It doesn't feel dry on the lips. It doesn't crumble like a liquid lipstick would. It's just very, I don't know, it's like creamy and hydrating. They've put something in it that makes it really comfortable on the lip. And the shade selection is a little interesting. They've got, I think maybe like eight or 10 different shades. If you're gonna try any of them out, I would highly recommend Toffee Frappe. It's just, it's beautiful. Also by Wet n Wild, and yes, I know that this feels like a Wet n Wild haul. I picked up the Perfect Pout Gel Lip Liner in the shade Bare to Comment. Again, it's a retractable pencil. It looks like this. The shade is really beautiful. It's very creamy. You barely have to use any pressure to get a ton of color when you're applying this. So I would be very light-handed so that you don't break the actual liner. I think it comes in four different shades. Again, they should definitely extend their shade range for this lip liner because the formula is beautiful. It's very rich, it's very pigmented. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's as matte as the color that I have on right now. You do have to reapply a little bit more than you would with this one. Naturally, because of that gel formula, it is gonna wear off a little bit quicker. I've had a few Annabelle hits in this haul and uh, it's time for some misses. I picked up three of the Annabelle Twist Up Retractable Lipstick Crayons. This is them right here and when they were sitting on the shelf there were no testers. I thought they're gonna be matte crayons although it is kind of my bad. It didn't say on them that they would be matte so why would I assume that? But they looked matte when I was looking at them. I picked the three shades that I thought would look gorgeous as mattes. The shade Absolute which is a really pale peachy pink. The shade Naked which is a pale nude peach shade. And then I got Romance which is a cool toned pink, almost kind of like a mauve shade. They're sort of a super glossy, hydrating lipstick, I guess. They're exactly what they say they are. It's just my fault for not looking them up first. I think I'm gonna be using them as a lipstick topper. I would return them if I could because I have a lot of products in my collection that do sort of the same thing. I can definitely appreciate the componentry. I absolutely love retractable products like this. Crayons, lip liners, lipsticks, especially when they're sort of skinny and long. They fit in my purse a lot better in my little makeup bag that I've got in there. Another thing that bothered me was the price. These were like $8.56 a pop. Got an Essence lip liner and this is in the shade Femme Fatale. This is just like a really beautiful, bright, classic red shade. Kind of like a fire engine red. I absolutely adore Essence lip liners. I think they're like two bucks. They are a steal at the drugstore. If you haven't tried them, I would highly recommend them. This is a new favorite. I also really love In the Nude. I love Satin Mauve. I love uh, Very Berry, is it? Rouge Berry, Berry Rouge, something like that. Pretty much all of them are fabulous. If you're at the drugstore and you see the Essence section, don't sleep on Essence lip liners. They're one of the best formulas that I have in my collection and I'm talking like high end and low end. I love wearing them on their own. They last a really long time and I also like wearing them underneath lipstick and uh, with lip gloss over top. So highly recommend this. Last but certainly not least, another Wet n Wild product. This is the Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Matte Lipstick, and this is in the shade Missy and Fierce. 
This is again a really bright red, a little bit deeper than the uh, Essence lip liner. I'm very impressed with this formula. Let's be honest, most liquid lipsticks are not the most comfortable to wear. We wear them because we love the shades. We just kind of put up with the discomfort because they look cute on. Upon purchasing this, I thought this would be no exception because it's a liquid lipstick. I'm not looking for comfort but I was pleasantly surprised. You can layer it on super thin and it's very, very pigmented. I would do maybe two coats to get it super opaque. Like I would say it's way more comfortable than an Anastasia liquid lipstick. It's right up there with Dose of Colors in my opinion. I also really wanted to pick up a uh, Nudist Peach and Rose Rebel. Rebel, Rose, the one that's mauve. They were not in stock at my superstore, so if I do pick those up in the meantime, while I'm editing this, I will insert swatches of those as well because I really, really want them. If you're looking for an inexpensive liquid lipstick at the drugstore, I would highly recommend this. They have a great shade selection and you just, you can't go wrong. All right, we're finally at the end of this haul. My throat is on fire. I haven't talked this much in a very long time. Uh, as always, I will list all the products that I mentioned in the description box below. Let me know if you have any cruelty-free drugstore recommendations in the comments. Keep your eyes peeled for a tutorial using some of these products that will be posted after this video. And let me know if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, love you, bye.